They won't grab one, give it over. No, just put it over, put it over. Go, 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 These are the top 10 moments in Raid Race history. Keep in mind there can be some great moments you've had, you might even have a favorite raid in mind, but for Day 1 Racers, these are the moments that made tuning in on Day 1 incredibly special. Over the past 9 years of Destiny, raiding has evolved, but stories are timeless. Let's begin, and make sure to join me for Raid Zone, hosted by me and CB Gray. On the big day of the raid race, March 10th, at 9 a.m. Eastern. Number 10. Wrath of the Machine was an odd day one race. There was nothing but overleveling and very few teams involved. You have to remember that a belt wasn't an option, and neither was a day one emblem, so the teams competing on day one were there for nothing but the challenge and the glory of Worlds First. In comes this team of runner-ups in previous day one raids, led by this young cat named Tifu known for Trials of Osiris and PvE fun challenges, and this Brainiac with the builds that pay the bills named Error. Along with what Redeem would become with Modern Tryhard and Flesh Crunch, this team of raiders would absolutely smoke Wrath of the Machine on day one, in only one hour and 59 minutes, proving that raid racing was truly a race and not a marathon. This would be a sign of what was to come for raid racing being taken more seriously, and would kick off Redeem's legacy of day one raid belts. Number 9. King's Fall was the raid I deemed to have changed the Destiny raid racing space, and it really did take a big page out of World of Warcraft's raid book, since it was a more straight line to Oryx than previous raids had been. Normally there was a lot of downtime, and King's Fall had really only one piece of it at the beginning. The rest was just boss after boss after boss. This mighty raid was obviously massive, but one moment stood out as THE moment on day one. Final stand. I hear we have to hit him again after he's done, so just be wary, be ready. T-Rex of Team Rare Drop overheard that there was a final stand at Oryx, being the first time in Destiny history that a boss had a little extra health for one final fight. A team right before Rare Drop had wiped due to this, but they would conquer Oryx instead taking home a long day one victory of 6 hours and 40 minutes for Worlds First. This is the moment when Final Stand began, but the first time and the mark of watching out for them will always be remembered. Yes! Number 8. Spire of Stars was the hardest raid ever made. Quote me on that one. But this raid was so hard to a non-hardcore player that Bungie just eventually sunset it. Jokes aside, day one of this raid was very tough, and not a lot of players were on the game in Warmind due to not being a fan of the direction of Destiny in the previous DLC, The Curse of Osiris. With very little racers and even smaller room for error on the final boss room, Valkaor, day one ended up being a very close race for Worlds First. Clan B Bold and Clan Tier 1 were both literally one ball away from getting a kill and Redeem ended up winning in the most clutch way possible, losing Flesh Crunch due to connection errors and bringing in Eon Styles. Quickly, they reached a final stand, and they took home the day one in 6 hours and 35 minutes. This was legendary not only for swapping up players at the last minute, but making the next step in raid racing, having backups and players who had been watching ready to go. As we continue, I had to add some honorable mentions. Hot swapping meta begins with Deepstone Crypt as Luminous pulls out all the stops and double snipe their way to a day one victory after all the struggles they faced like a player forgetting to infuse Xenophage and instead using Air Apparent. Yeah. Another great moment is the first time a raid was defeated of course. After a long slog of trial and error without any preparation, Math Class who was named Prime Guard at the time finished in first place and second place with a time of 10 hours and 44 minutes on that first clear. In here sits the throne room of Atheon, and in here was the first and only math class day one victory, with a tragically poetic name coming in second place. Number 7. Have you ever heard the story of LFG World's First? Well, it doesn't get much better for fanfare and any hope of pulling off a win for the people of random teams than that. 
After a brutal launch of Curse of Osiris, the raid layer Eater of Worlds was up for the chopping block of critiques, one being that it was short and a bit too easy until the final boss. But Eater had something others did not, an LFG win. This raid would also be the fastest a day one of a raid would ever be cleared in just 1 hour and 37 minutes, pointing to the struggles Bungie had in doing raid layers. But the accomplishment is nothing to bat an eye over. Oh, it oh. brought us back oh, here. What? We did it! We did it! <laughs> what? Woo! What? 236. Number 6. Garden of Salvation on day 1 was so brutal, with a much harder adjustment than players were used to seeing as Armor 2.0 was new, abilities were tuned so much, contest mode was still very fresh, and weapon metas were no longer infinite grenade launchers. Yeah, it was brutal. Ascend had been close to pulling off a win in previous races before, and had been known for speedrunning up until this point. But after 6 hours and 14 minutes with a very close finish to second place, one famous line was said, and Ascend etched their names into the victory books. Wait, mission complete. Wait, 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 wait. Go to orbit, anti, go to orbit. Anti, 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 you. Anti, it's you. Anti, it's you. Anti, it's you. Oh my god. The drop off between the teams that finished this day one was brutal. And a lot of people thought this boss was broken on day one. But the room was just that hard. This was the race that put speedrunners in control of day ones. But this was an unforgettable moment in raid racing history. Number 5. We're going to be saying this team's name a lot on this list and the future with Raid Zone and other events. But Elysium finding their way to the world's first three-peat and establishing a dynasty in just one year is absolutely insane. The story of this clan can be found on my channel already, but the main point is that establishing a dynasty and three-peating after climbing back from defeat in King's Fall Remaster was miraculous as it was everyday business for a team this good. Raid racing has come so far, and in an era where it's more competitive than ever before, pulling off wins now, especially three in a row, is ridiculous. Elysium may have another story in this list as we head into the next day one race with Lightfall. Number 4. Crown of Sorrows was a nightmare of a day one, and not just because it was the first one with contest mode, or that it was a hard raid, but because of how little preparation there was on the day one. Crown of Sorrow dropped the same day as the Season of Opulence, and unless you were following Sweatsicle's bounty prep sheet, Hello! For that day, you weren't going to be able to race efficiently. Crown's biggest moment landed on the final boss, Galron. Be Bold and Math Class were neck and neck for the kill of Galron. And the way for a team to know if they won Worlds first was by getting the exotic to drop for all players on day one. Something Bungie would later change. But it was changed because of this moment. On the exact same instance of the boss, meaning the boss hadn't been swapped again due to not wiping, B Bold was one damage phase ahead of Math Class. So when B Bold did win, they got the exotic. But when Math Class came in second place, they also got the exotic. Leading to one of the uh, definitely moments in raid racing history. This would make Bungie change how raid exotics drop for worlds first. And Data would get his moment to roast Bungie on that day one. I, I know, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about the raid, but I want to talk to you about the weekend before. Okay. Because so, you're battling throat infection, this was like, yeah, the raid was like your fun. flu game, your Michael Jordan flu game. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy where we placed. It was, we found out that it was actually the closest between first and second in the history of, of Destiny. And I'm very happy with where we placed and everything, but man, like, you got all these silvers and bronzes, and it's like, yeah, but a gold one would be nice yeah. one day to put on the mantle. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll try next time. I think we got a really solid squad. You'll, so. have, a, you'll have another chance this fall. Number three. Vow of the Disciple was probably the worst day one race we had ever seen. For other raids, it was a nightmare in difficulty or lack of time. Here, you had all the time in the world because the raid just didn't work. 
Servers were so clogged that it just broke the game. And while Bungie tried to put out the fire, Elysium was also in it, stuck and being booted for hours. Some teams didn't face as many issues and were at Rolk in lightning speed, while others suffered. Day 1 could have ended with a massive advantage for those in first with no bugs or error codes. But instead, Elysium pulled together a comeback for the ages, and beat Rolk just ahead of Math Class by 3 minutes and 15 seconds, solidifying Math Class's runner-up position and Elysium as Destiny's next great team. This one, like all others, has a full video about it, and I recommend that you watch how that race went down. Number 2. Last Wish had enough moments to be a top 10 of its own for sure, but this one was worthy of a runner-up position. After so many hours of just brute forcing the vault room for teams racing, Ninji and his team pulled well ahead by guessing the symbols. The odds are so unlikely to have gotten through, especially with how brutal the Knights were in that room. But this team was at Riven for hours compared to the next teams up. One thing working against him was how hard Riven was, and how much info players would receive getting to it. Riven's final stand was unlike any other, being the first and only time there were two final stands. Oh my god! Did we get it? We got Let's go! Is it? I'm shooting! I'm shooting! I'm shooting! Oh my god! I'm shooting! I'm shooting! I'm shooting! I'm shooting! Please no! Please no! What? No, that's because the ghost. Wait, it's because the ghost. It's because it's because of shared fate. The res timer. If that didn't fucking count, I swear to God. I don't think that counts because I think you had more time than that. After so many hours at Riven and almost choking the second final stand. Redeem pulled ahead to first place in front of thousands of eyes watching. Oh my god! Damage! Oh my god! We got it! The key! 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 I got a ball! I got a ball! I got a ball! But ladies and gentlemen, only one moment takes the cake. And that's after our spawns! Number one. You probably knew that this was going to be number one if you're familiar with raid racing. But I had to show it anyways. Tanix. Nope, 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 wrong video. Number one is this moment. Whoa, oh, we did it. Oh, from the chest. Oh, we did it. The chest, the chest. please. The chest. No please. way. Please, shoot Bungie. It. Please. Shoot it. Fuck please, shoot don't it. troll. Please, shoot. Bungie, don't troll. Please, please Bungie, don't, don't troll. Please, just give me my loot. Please, Bungie, oh don't God. troll, you assholes. I, mean, I hate you. Triumph. I we fucking hate triumph. you and I love you at the same time. I love you, Bungie. Bungie, please. For the love of God, you've been torturing me for 20 I beg you. The very first day one emblem. The first raid exotic of RNG coming back to Destiny 2 for all the racers guaranteed and an epilogue cutscene giving credit to the racers for unleashing the curse in the Dreaming City made the moment even more special.